Uh, Graham and I are probably the only two that can talk about when St. Roos Farming Systems actually started, which was 19 years ago. Uh, it was a, a public meeting in the RSL Club in Condoblin, and a group of farmers from Condoblin Parks and Forms got together and decided that there was a need to focus research more into the Central West. And I think there were three, three reasons for that. And, and they set up Central West Farming Systems with the, the slogan, I guess, of farmers advancing research because they saw a need for relevant research in the Central West. They were concerned at the time that maybe their dollars weren't being used as well as they could be in this region. They were concerned about declining government uh, involvement in rd and &E. I mean, there was even talk about selling the Condobin Research Station at that time. And of course, DPI did pull out of the Diniloquin and, and Tamora. And they also thought there was gains to be made by farmers actually being involved in research and making sure that research was focused on, on their needs, and particularly with the systems focus. So, so 19 years ago, Central West Farming System started. Um, it's it's uh, survived quite well in this period, I think. Their first project was, um, I think I'd call it, uh, what's the word for it? Ambitious. And because the big issue at the time, 19 years ago, was this area was in a traditional pasture cropping rotation, fairly wide cropping regime, maybe three crops every eight years, something like that. And the issue was, what happens if we want to increase the cropping intensity? Can these soils survive? Uh, can we make a buck? Uh, things like no-till were becoming available. And so the first big project for Central West Farming Systems covered uh, 120 hectares. It had uh, four replications, it had four farming systems, it was fully phased, it satisfied every biometrician I've ever known, and it ran quite well for a fair while. And, and the outcome out of that really was that we could intensify cropping, uh, but if you looked at all the systems, which were lots of livestock right through to only cropping, you could actually make most of them work pretty well, and you could make a dollar out of all of them if you did them well. Uh, and I think that was a pretty important finding for farmers at the time. So that was the early part of Central West Farming Systems. As I say, only Graham and I probably still survive from that period. Um, moving on then to this place, um, I should just make a couple of comments about this. This is 120 hectares. It's Crown land. It was um, originally set up for irrigation by the Lachlan Irrigation Research and Advisory Committee, uh, which a few of us were involved with. And Tony, Tony did his PhD studies here. I've just forgotten about doing azuki beans here, Tony. Back when Sydney University were involved here. They, they moved some research capacity from Forbes to here. But then unfortunately that sort of fell apart and, and the place ran down and, and became a bit messy to be honest. And about two and a half years ago um, Central West Farming Systems managed to, uh, to get uh, responsibility for it and to try and knock it back into shape. And as you can see now it's looking pretty smick and I'd like to think, thank Glenn and his staff for, for looking, you know, getting it looking as it is. It, it had a massive uh, weed problem, the, the channels were all run down. Um, in that time, Central West Farming Systems put a new motor in, put a new pump in, done all the channels, laser, uh, you know, so that's all on, on, <coughs> back on grade. Um, we're getting on top of the wild oats, there's a few left, and we're trying to get back into a rotation so that we can do research in here as it should be done. And, and I'd take my hat off to the executive that they see this as a research place. That's his priority. I mean, if there's commercial areas to be, to be done to keep the rotation going or whatever, that's fine. But the emphasis is on research and, um, and we're really keen to cooperate with all the research bodies we can. And basically just, uh, just recovering the basic costs of land and water preparation, things like that. It's really, we encourage any group, we, uh, plant breeders, research groups um, to be involved. And perhaps I could just say in the last couple of years we've had that involvement. So this year there's some plots here from only very few from Australian National University. We've had things, we've had joint work with La Trobe University. We have a major, we've got probably a thousand plots here this year with Murdoch University. Um, and obviously also with Adelaide we've got some barley. And then our biggest links have been with CSRO and, and Greg Rebetsky and Tony Condon are here. And I'll get them just to say a couple of words about what they're doing. Uh, on top of our own work. So that's, that's the plan. Um, we're really excited that we can use this site for irrigated research, but also rain-fed research. And, and the, the beauty of the rain-fed work here is that if we get a year like this year, we can rescue things. I mean, this year, this time, uh, in this modern age, you can't say, oh, look, we lost all our genetic material because it was a drought. And you just can't do that. So we're fortunate here that if we get in that situation, which we did this year, we can put water on. And, and that's our aim. 
Um, perhaps just a bit about what's here this year. I know not all of you are technically into the, interested in the technical part, but just very briefly. So Central West Farming Systems ourselves here have got a number of projects. One of them is looking at barley phenology genes, and that's using material from Ben Travascus at CSR in Canberra. And that, what they do there is taking a really quick variety and then put into it all the different photo period and vernalisation genes that we know of with genetic markers and seeing, uh, sow them at three dates and then look at the phenology of how the barley develops and understand how we can get varieties that suit our development pattern. Uh, second one we have here is some work on nitrogen looking at not so much just on you know, rates of nitrogen but more about how nitrogen moves around plants and moves into the grain and that's a small experiment on that. With Murdoch University we're looking at what controls grain protein in, in wheat. We know that some varieties like Spitfire can have higher protein at the same yield level under some conditions. And we have mapping population here where we're looking at what's causing that. Mapping population meaning we look at, at the, the, um, look at the genes, do the genotyping, phenotype in the field, and then work out well, what's controlling grain protein in this, in this particular population. Uh, they're probably the main, I think, work here with Central West Farming Systems this year. I might just get Greg, <coughs> Greg Rebeski from CSRO just briefly to say what he's up to here. So, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just I should say there's about 7,000 plots down there, so we're not going to walk you down there no. for 7,000 <laughs> Greg, thank you. I'm a wheat breeder, and uh, this is such an essential site for us. It's, it's close to Canberra for our drive. Good coffee in Condoblins, so that's <laughs> great. Um, we have an assured finish here. We have the capacity to irrigate. Um, we can put in experimental germplasm with new genetics. We can do amazing things to that genetics. To, we can sow them early, we can sow them late, we can challenge them with uh, weed mimics, and uh, we get rel very reliable uh, yields that um, uh, um, are really um, managed well by the, breed, uh, by the, the biometricians because they're very uniform fields. Um, this new uh, infrastructure investment will be fantastic for us because it will allow us to bring more scientists up to the site to work with us and um, create a capacity to undertake our research you know, remote to Canberra. So the work that, we're focus that I'm focusing on, and uh, Tim will talk about his work, is, is new genetics for competitiveness. So uh, weeds are worth about three and a half billion dollars a year to the grain industry. If we could help the, uh, the chemistries and help the management to get better control weeds, uh, reduce the cost, reduce the incidence of herbicide resistance through in-crop wind variety uh, competitiveness, that would be a, a very useful thing. We've also got uh, some new genetics for increasing coleoptile length, the shoot that goes from the seed to the soil surface, so growers can re reliably sow deeper and get, and get good establishment. So new genetics there. And the other genetics is around the um, removal of the ear whisker or the awn. So, yeah, can we develop wheats that are awnless, that will give growers greater flexibility uh, in areas which are prone to frost? So, they're probably the three main areas uh, where I engage very closely with Neil and the team here. And I just want to thank the team here. As Neil said, they've done an amazing job in building what is uh, an excellent facility. It's a facility we'll just get to use more and more with this, this new GADC investment. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Rick. My name's Tony Condon. I'm from Cairo in Canberra as well. well I, was, I was born in Condoblin a few, just a few years ago. <laughs> um, I've got um, about 4,000 plots out here in, the, in, the, in this block uh, and looking mainly at two, two characteristics. One set of material is aimed at improving lodging tolerance in wheat and a lot of the dryland growers around here won't be too con concerned about lodging, except in those years when they think, oh, this is really a fantastic year, great crop, and then it all falls over and they lose half the value of the crop. So the, the, the project is focused on irrigated wheat, but we see it as, a, as an insurance policy for, for dryland growers as well in, in good seasons. And the, most of the work was done by our collaborators in Queensland. The, the, the work was funded by GRNC, the Northern Panel, um, to improve the lodging tolerance of Australian wheat because our wheat breeders, uh, while they're interested, it's not a, a strong focus for them. So we've introduced uh, genetics for improved lodging tolerance into uh, three current varieties, Spitfire, Suntop and Gregory. Uh, that material is now being made available to all the breeding companies to explore that may move forward in their breeding programs as, as new parents or could even be released as new varieties if, if things really go well. 
So that's uh, that's one project we have we're working on here, and I guess we're aiming at about six tonnes per hectare in this in this sort of uh, environment here, with a bit of with, with the irrigation that's available here in Condobolin, uh, which has been vital this year, obviously. The other project we're working on is is uh, genetics around the ability of wheat to extract moisture from depth. So we've heard a lot over the last few years about the, the growing emphasis on storing and getting water into the subsoil. As our, as our climate changes, we're getting more, su more summer rainfall further south into these sorts of regions and further south again. What's that, what that means is that farmers are able to store moisture from the subsoil, which is great. Have to do the right genetics, we can effectively guarantee that they can get that water out. The wheat variety they're growing doesn't have the ability to get down to that store of some sort of moisture, then there's uh, sort of a wasted effort on the farmer's behalf. So we're exploring that attribute here. What, what we've done here is we've set up one irrigation bay uh, with a pre-irrigation that's basically filled the profile. And we put out two genetic populations to explore the ability of those populations to explore to reach that water in depth. And right next door, we've got a fully irrigated bay of the same material, so we can really make a really good comparison between how the yield potential of the material, but also how good it is at getting moisture out of the subsoil. And we're basically repeating the same exercise at, at Yanko, a few hundred decades down the field. And I have to say, this season hasn't been good for many growers, I guess, with the lack of rainfall, but it's been perfect for this sort of experiment. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we're doing here. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, I suppose what uh, what that shows is just how valuable a site this is for the local RDNA uh, organisations and how highly they do value um, their ability to come and work here. I'd like to uh, call on uh, Dave Carter from the uh, Condobolin Aboriginal uh, Land Council uh, to give a welcome to the country. Thanks very much for um, everybody for being here today. It's, um, it's a great privilege to actually come here today. Uh, for those that don't know me, I'm a proud Wiradjuri person. I guess my story started with Wiradjuri um, down at um, Wiradjuri Country at Warrandyet, the Mission Darlington Point. And most of my family grew up around Narendra, and I ended up here 32 years ago because this is where I felt I needed to be. So I'm still here after all those years. But I think look, um, it's a great honour that this has happened here in Condobin. I said it's a great opportunity for both the Aboriginal community and the farm communities in our know, areas and indeed in Australia to further their research. I think it's a great thing for the ministers actually, and whoever else has been involved to see that, had that vision, you know, for Condobin. <coughs> and they put it somewhere else. So, um, but more so, I think it's been a great opportunity to show that the Aboriginal community of Condobin, both the members of the Land Council, plus indeed the water community, are prepared to work together. And all we ever asked for was that we do it the right way so the culture is preserved. And like, a lot of farmers, I know they are um, a bit reluctant to deal with the Land Council. They think there's going to be claims, they can't farm, they can't do this, they can't do that. It's nothing about that. It's about the preservation of our culture. And it doesn't really matter today whether it's Aboriginal or European. We're a multicultural society. And we need to preserve whatever we can. But having said that, if everybody had just joined us for a moment with a minute's silence, as we reflect over this country and we work on today and today, and plus indeed we'll stand for today, beg your pardon, Peter. But uh, if we just have a, a minute's silence, please, and reflect over it, and well as both past and present, we appreciate it. Thank you. No, that's the way it's Very much for that. Um, if once again, look, I'd just like everybody just to respect you know, the Wiradjuri Nation and uh, like the, like say, the, um, the elders, both past and present, and I think it's a good gathering we have here today. And I do apologise for being a bit crook. I think a bit of us do with medication I was given, like yesterday, if you had a semi, I was actually out of this world, something chronic. You would have thought I was on break for sure, or need something massive. I'm serious about that. I went home a bit earlier and I thought I'll just lay me out for a couple of seconds. 
in that couple of seconds, I looked up and it was, you know, like about 10 or 12 minutes to, to 2 o'clock. You know, that's why I made this man honest about it. Is there's no other excuse to say I've had a more important function or anything. It was just that I did. I nodded off for a moment. And I'm still a bit knowing, but, but thanks once again, anyway, for inviting me along the day. I hope it really goes well. I believe it will, and it is great for it to know them. And I think our mayor might have had a fair bit to do with this now. GM, the great advocates for our community, and thanks once again. Thank you, David. I'd uh, like to um, now uh, welcome uh, Mr. Mark Colton, the member for Parks, to. Uh, Announce. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, David. Uh, Dave, thank you very much for the welcome to the country. And, uh, uh, Mayor John uh, Medcalf and uh, and uh, Rob Hunt, the GM of the Council, acknowledge your presence here as well. Look, it's uh, it's a great privilege for me to be here. It's a little sad that. Yeah, you're probably expecting someone a little bit higher up the tree uh, than myself and, uh, and Fiona Nash uh, was keen to come and obviously uh, the circumstances have overtaken that and so as the local member I'm very pleased to step in and, and represent the government on this day and uh, I've a firm belief that uh, uh, success in agriculture is a combination of, uh, of what you learn from knee high uh, combined with research uh, and what you learn from your neighbours over the way and uh, uh, I firmly believe that the moment you think you know how to be a farmer, you should sell out because from that day on you'll start going backwards. Uh, there's always something to uh, always something to learn, and uh, and, I, and I think the Central West Farming Systems guys are uh, are a great example of farmers working together, uh, pooling their knowledge, uh, drawing in uh, uh, outside research, and putting their money where their mouth mouth is, and. Uh, and, and it's been there for some time. Indeed, I, I'm trying to think, it's more than 20 years ago that I came to a Central West Farming System um, field day, uh, and it was, a, it was on planting equipment, and it hadn't rained yet, and so we were over near park somewhere, and these guys with the dish planters were having a bit of trouble with the bounce. It wasn't going quite to plan, but it was, it was a great uh, example of, of, of what the committee does to bring, uh, you know, there was probably 20-odd 20 20 machines there that day that the farmers could come along. and. Um, and compare them, and indeed, uh, when I was when Robin and I were farming, it's uh, just over ten years ago now since we grew a crop. But everything we did was was, was uh, zero till, and uh, uh, you know if we I tell people if we farm like our fathers and grandfathers did, we probably wouldn't be here. Uh, you know you've got to evolve as it goes along. I know my the, the last crop I grew wasn't too bad, and uh, zero till. I grew a crop despite the fact I had not one clue what I was doing. <laughs> he was absolutely horrified. You haven't planned this at all, you know. But uh, uh, and 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 I've been out of the game now ten years, and quite frankly, I couldn't step back in because uh, what people are doing now, uh, as, as, as you might, if you're in it all the time, you might not realise how quickly it changes. But when you step out and looking over the fence, uh, the change uh, happens very very quickly. And so. Um, the Grains and Research Development Corporation, uh, uh, thank you for uh, recognising this as a, a worthwhile project uh, and, uh, and investing that money on behalf of the, of the government as well. And the, 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 you probably all know more about the amount than, than I do, but I understand it's, uh, it's, it's uh, just under $400,000 uh, to, uh, to construct the lab. And I'm assuming this is the pad behind us here uh, to, uh, uh, for it to go into, and it's a, it's a crucial spot in the state. Uh, um, the, you know, Lockman Shire priding itself as being in the middle of the state uh, uh, does put it in a unique position because you, you've got different weather patterns to the south, different soil, uh, very different weather patterns and soil to the northern part of my electorate, uh, and, uh, and so it's appropriate that there's a research facility here that is located uh, in this part of the state uh, to take note of, of your, your unique weather patterns but also the unique soil. And I've got to say, I wouldn't mind getting my hands on a bit of uh, this country where we are now. It's a magnificent block and, uh, uh, and well done on, on getting it straightened up and back into, uh, uh, into the research facility it is. And uh, John, I'd like to congratulate you and, uh, and, and Lachlan Shire for your uh, role in this. We're helping with some of the infrastructure. Uh, I know that uh, Lachlan Shire are, uh, are very proactive at uh, identifying uh, projects uh, that are going to improve the, 
sustainability, uh, the profitability, uh, and the longevity uh, of, of that shire. And, uh, and you know, this is one. Uh, if I went to some of my colleagues uh, in the metropolitan areas and some of the local councils, just uh, uh, funded a, a grains research uh, part, funded a grains research facility, they'd be a little bit astounded. But um, uh, hats off to you uh, for, for seeing the need. And, uh, and, and with the in-kind help that you've been able to put into uh, this infrastructure, thank you. So um, I don't know whether there's a declaration to come here, David, or not, but uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, on behalf of the government, uh, uh, look, I'm pleased that uh, you got to where you are, and I look forward to coming back and uh, and seeing the uh, the lab in, um, uh, in in working glory. And uh, in the northern part of my electorate, uh, Sydney Uni now, I've got a facility at the IA Watson Research Station and uh, going back, I know Nick Derira uh, in, uh, in developing uh, drought tolerant uh, dwarf varieties of wheat back in the 60s, uh, actually expanded the, the wheat growing area uh, in northern New South Wales exponentially. Uh, they were able to grow wheat uh, uh, west of the Newell Highway up in the north which was considered crazy stuff uh, 30 or 40 years ago and now it's probably the you know, the heart of wheat production uh, in the northern part of the state. So I'm sure uh, the results that come out of here will, will also enhance the uh, ability to produce and, uh, uh, and, uh, and grow and uh, prosper in this part. So thank you very much for having me. Thank you. very much. Uh, it's my, uh, my duty uh, to introduce Steve Jeffries, the Managing Director of GRDC. I've known Steve for probably more years than Bart does not remember, but I think uh, one of the, the beauties of Steve is that he's come through a whole range of activities, from a, an, an agronomist, uh, did a PhD, become a plant breeder, uh, then moved into AGT and, and took AGT into being the, the dominant wheat breeding company that is in, in Australia today. I think those of you who have already met Steve will realise, I think one of his major strengths is equally at home in the paddock, uh, in the research lab or in the boardroom. I think that's a strength you bring, Steve, so uh, welcome and we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, Neil. Firstly, I'd, I'd like to uh, uh, recognise the uh, traditional owners of the of the, the land here, the Wiradjuri people. And David, thank you very much for coming out of your uh, out of your deathbed <laughs> to be here today. So it'd be a great great effort. Um, I'd also uh, like to acknowledge uh, the honorary Mark Coulton, uh, who I understand flew down from Broken Hill today to be here. Uh, and it's great, uh, obviously, a great passion for, for the industry and for rural communities, and uh, uh, we really appreciate your support here today. Uh, David Watt, uh, the chair of uh, Central West Farming System, and I know there are a number of uh, board members here. I, I, I met Ruth at uh, uh, excellent grain grower function in Perth. Uh, what was it, a couple of months ago, wasn't it? She did an outstanding job presenting uh, Western, uh, the uh, Western... Central West Farming System uh, business and uh, uh, good on you. Also, uh, acknowledge uh, John Metcalf, the, the Mayor of the Lachlan Shire, we, uh, and, and your co-investment. And I agree with Mark, uh, it, it is hard for councils to, to find resources to invest in pro projects, we understand that, and it does reflect uh, how important you see that grains R&D is to the local community and to the local economy. So well done to the council because I know that it, it marks absolutely spot on. It is very difficult uh, uh, to, to uh, find those sort of resources with the tight budgets that uh, the councils work under. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge uh, the chair of, uh, of our northern region, uh, John Minogue here, you put your hand up. Uh, we also have uh, Tony Hamilton uh, from our northern panel here. Welcome Tony, I haven't said hello to you. And uh, while he's here representing, uh, he's wearing all our gear. <laughs> Maybe because we give away the shirts and Syro doesn't. But, <laughs> but uh, he was here on, on Syro business. But, but Mark, is, uh, sorry, Greg is actually on the, the Western panel. So he contributes uh, to our activities in, uh, very much in the Western panel. And Neil Fratello, you heard before, a long history of working with Neil in my old days as a barley breeder and then a wheat breeder. And, uh, and also Neil's been, on the, been a real valuable contributor to both the southern and northern panel uh, of GRDC. So you may have, some of you may have, may have heard me talk about, I guess, the why of GRDC. What, what are we here for? What's our purpose? Well, our purpose is to invest 
uh, in research, development and extension to create enduring profitability for Australian grain growers. And to, while that is our purpose, we operate within the, within the constraints of the legislation that we're, we operate in, in under the, the Primary Industries Research and Development Act. And to that end, we don't do research ourselves. We invest on levy powers and federal government contributions. Your money, uh, on behalf of you, we invest in research. So we must partner with other institutions to deliver that value proposition to you, the levy payers, and also back to the government through improved, improved economy and growth of the, the economy. So we partner with agencies like CSIRO, and they, they're, they're many of the projects down here, we co-fund with them. I think there's 8,000 plots down here, isn't there, Greg, that, that are on site here. Universities, and really importantly, grower groups like Central West Farming Systems uh, are an important part of that. Um, However, we've we've seen, and I think uh, I think I'm not sure who who I think it was David or no, uh, it was Neil who mentioned the declining in investment a lot by state government departments, and I know you've you've seen it here out in the Central West with New South Wales DPI. I'm I'm pleased to be able to report that 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 decline has been halt, halted to some extent by New South Wales DPI, but it has been declining for some time, and this is right across the board. In, in across Australia. In fact, if you go back seven years ago, um, GRDC accounted for 35% of the total grains R&D investment in Australia. We now account for greater than 60% of it. Um, so that has changed and we've seen a decline in the capacity and we've seen a decline in the people, the people being employed by institutions, but a real important part here is we've seen it also a decline or, or less investment in infrastructure and the people, it's no good having good people if they haven't got good tools to do their business with. So infrastructure, R&D infrastructure is just as critical, okay, it's not quite as important as good people, but it, they need to have those tools to be able to do good business. To that end, we, our board uh, this year, or la uh, last financial year actually, approved a budget of $15 million to invest nationally in building up or re-establish. And we've done very little over the last 10 years in infrastructure investment. We've done some, but not, not to this extent. We felt that there was an urgent need to start addressing this issue and to do it on an ongoing basis. So uh, the board approved $15 million, and I'm really pleased to be able to say that, uh, that an applicant we were very grateful. We were actually really keen to see grower groups put their hand up for some funding. In fact, that was a primary target of, of us. And it was great that, that, that the Central West Farming Systems partnered with the Shire Council and with, a, with an excellent infrastructure. And we can, we've contributed $380,000 on your behalf as levy payers and also on behalf of the federal government. So. It's, it's, it's a real great pleasure for us to, to be partnering with Central West Farming Systems. They're, they've been a, a long-term partner. I think somebody, I think we did some calculations on, on email on the way down here. And uh, over the past decade, we've invested over $7 million uh, on your, of your money uh, here with Central West Farming Systems. In fact, the current investments are in the order of $3 million in total over the life span of the projects that are in place in collaboration with Central West Farming Systems right now. Um, it's the, it's the grower-driven groups like Central West Farming Systems that we, we value a hell of a lot because that, particularly in the D&E space, it's, it's driven by grower needs, it's driven by local grower needs, and by partnering with, with grower groups, we know that the, the local issues and the local uh, constraints and opportunities are, are, are being addressed. So we're, we're very pleased to partner with, with uh, Central West Farming Systems in the new infrastructure. We look forward to a collaborative uh, and cooperative uh, and continuing investment and growing investment over the, over the near future. So thank you very much, David. And uh, we wish everybody uh, success going forward. Uh, I'd just like to thank, I know Di, Di's not here, and I, I understand she had a lot to do with with the, with the organisation here, I think there's a Kath Harley, is she here?
No, I, I understand she has a fair bit to do with this. And on our, on our uh, we have Kylie Dunstan, our Head of Corporate Affairs, and there's a person by the name of Cathy Warburton, who's our legal counsel, who basically has driven and made this initiative happen in terms of actually getting the investments on the ground. So with that, thank you very much for your, for your attention, and we look forward to working with you into the future. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jeffries. Um, so, sorry now, I'd like to uh, ask um, our mayor, uh, John Metcalf, to uh, say a few words. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. I wasn't realising this was going to happen, but anyway, this is, uh, I'm very, very pleased to be able to do this. I really am because uh, I have uh, been work actually working with Di, and I'm very, very sorry she's not here today. I'm really happy. And uh, there's, one, one, there's come to fruition now, I think uh, uh, we just have to give a pat on the back another day. But uh, first of all, uh, thank you for the invitation from the Central West Farm Trail. And uh, welcome to uh, Mark Cullen, our one of the parks. And it's good to drive from it. It's good to see you uh, flying around being in the sea, so that's absolutely great. And, uh, and also I'd just like to acknowledge that we are in the rest of the country as well and uh, pay my respects to well the past and present and thank uh, Councillor Carter for coming out and uh, actually doing, uh, doing that. That was very good. Thank you, Dave. Uh, uh, this, uh, this, this setup here I think is just so important you know, to, uh, to this part of the part of New South Wales. I mean, uh, we are the centre of New South Wales, we're the heart of New South Wales and uh, the thing is with, uh, with the uh, ag station and the central west farming, I think over time and that sort of thing we've been seeing a little bit of depletion in what's been happening and, uh, and I feel now with, with this, this facility and the investment from, uh, from the government and that sort of thing I can only see us, see us going forward because as has been mentioned there's been terrific change in the, in the agriculture in the last 10 years and if we're going to keep up with it we've just got to keep doing this, this sort of work uh, to make uh, the health improve because uh, uh, the, not only the investment but uh, when it comes to getting people to work within this industry we need to, these sort of facilities to, to train them and to actually make them feel like they're, that they are a part of it. Uh, I congratulate everybody for uh, what they have done. It's uh, great to see that uh, we are working together. I think that's a great, great thing because the people we've got around us, whether here today, whether it's the GRDC, or the doctor, or the Central West Farming, or, or the uh, ag station itself, or whether it's the banks or the shire or whatever, it's the idea we've got to work together to make these things happen. And uh, I congratulate everyone and, and thank you very much for the opportunity of having to say a few words and uh, good luck in the future. Thank you. Okay, final, I think we're getting pretty close to the end, you've got to put up with me again, but I suppose you probably want to know, well, what are we actually doing? Um, so that you can see the pad uh, levelled off at 6 o'clock yesterday, or maybe 4 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, very well done, and, and um, our local contract has been tremendous to work with. He's done a great job. Um, so what's going in here is a, basically a steel frame building, and I take my hat off here to Graham McDonald, who's... We're very fortunate to have a really good executive. Graham's basically in an honorary position as um, work supervisor, or I'm not sure what kind of shed designer, lab designer, all that sort of stuff in his own time, and he's done a fantastic job. And I think I'd like to recognise that. So basically, yeah, a steel frame building going up, and within that, we'll have, well, for a start, we'll have things like toilets. That's a bit of an innovation for here. I'm sorry for <laughs> anyone caught a bit short. I'm sorry. We, we did it, and we were thinking about a long drop, but anyhow. No, we, we will actually have some basic facilities, uh, like a, a shower and a toilet, which will be fantastic for all of us. Um, and basic, a basic laboratory in there so that visitors like CSIRO and, the, and students and the university <coughs> themselves can do basic things. It's not a high-tech lab. It'll be certainly for doing things like um, grain analysis and soil, basic soil analysis, all that sort of stuff which will be just terrific to be able to do it on site. Um, you know, with, we'll have a small meeting room um, and a shower and a few things like that. Then a multi-purpose concrete floored area that we'll use for things like threshing. Um, we hope eventually to get some money for dehydrators. That's unfortunately, we just couldn't spread to that at the moment, but that'll, we'll have a cool room in there, threshing machinery, soil sampling gear, that sort of stuff. And then a couple more bays with a gravel floor where we, we can park machinery. 
Um, we've got cedars and harvesters and things which are either jammed in that little old shed which threatens to blow over, have the roofs come off once, um, or, or elsewhere. So, look, it's going to be a multi purpose sort of um, shed, I guess, that's, that's covering all of those areas, and uh, it'll make a huge, uh, it'll be a huge benefit to, to the, all the groups that come here to work. And as I've said before, we really encourage other groups, outside groups, to come here and use the facility. That's what it's all about. It helps growers, it helps our research, and it helps the community. So. That's the aim of it. Um, you can see the infrastructure started. We aim to have it finished by uh, March, April. Um, Giving the shed up and all the internal fittings done and the power and all that done, which takes a bit of time. And I th I'm really confident that'll make a big, uh, a big difference to grains research in this area. So, thank you very much, GDC and to the Shire Council. Right. Um, well, Mr. Carlton, uh, Dr. Jeffries. Uh, Mayor Metcalf, and ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you for the time today. This kind of brings a, our, uh, our announcement to a, its conclusion. Um, this is a really exciting time for Central West Farming Systems with the announcement today of this substantial investment into our DNA in our region. A quick little look through a, a couple of websites there, and, and our strategy is to be a leading, or Central West Farming Systems strategy is to be a leading regional group effectively demonstrating, extending and promoting farming innovation to assist farmers in managing their business for long-term economic, social and environmental viability. And the GRDC strategy, as Dr Jeffrey said, is investing in research, development and extension to create enduring profitability for Australian grain growers. And when you look at the strategies of the two organisations, they're very much alike, especially that focus of improving the long-term viability or the enduring profitability of grain growers. And this investment in the capacity and the capability of Central West Farming Systems, as well as you know, being able to use it with our research partners, is a big step along the path of our shared strategic direction. On behalf of the members of Central West Farming Systems, I'd like to thank GRDC for their investment in uh, what we are actually calling the Central West Farming Systems Research Innovation Hub, to give it a name. Um, but more importantly, I'd like to thank them for their display of confidence in the work that Central West Farming Systems is doing in this region. Uh, of course, a, a project of this, uh, this size has many challenges that need to be overcome, and I'd like to express our thanks for the support and assistance uh, of Mayor Medcalf and the Lachlan Shire Council, uh, Senator Fiona Nash and Regional Development Australia, uh, Central West, Condobal and Aboriginal Land Council, Crown Lands, and the support shown by our partnering organisations, so farming, other farming systems groups, universities, and the CSIRO. To conceive and, and design a, a, and build a research innovation hub requires a highly committed and skillful team to bring it to fruition. And on behalf, again, on behalf of the Central West Farming System members, I'd like to thank and congratulate our Research Innovation Hub team of Graham McDonald, uh, Dr Neil Patel and our CEO Di Parsons for their dedication and hard work. Again, uh, thank, everyone, thank you everyone uh, who's helped with the project along the way. You know, creating enduring profitability or, or long-term viability, it's a team effort. Um, no one organisation is going to achieve it in isolation. And the collaboration shown in the establishment of this research hub is a great example of what we can achieve when we work together towards a common purpose. Thank you. There's still plenty of food, everybody. If you would like to um, have more drinks, there you go.